You know, there have been many fan theories concerning the subscribe button for the Grand Line review. Some have said that it is the final road poneglyph, whilst others claim that it is Luffy's biological mother, which explains his tendency to smash things. However, the most outlandish theory by far is that pressing it will deliver regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, which is so absurd that I probably shouldn't even have mentioned it. Try it anyway, though. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are doing something unusual by diving deep into the realm of theories, not something I generally do outside of chapter reviews. However, there is a twist to this here topic because I'm not necessarily looking for reasonable sounding thoughts or predictions, now that's boring. And in fact, I am far more interested in the realm of obscurity. So I put up a community post on the channel asking you amazing people for some of the more strange and left field One Piece theories that you have heard because there are many theories out there that are well thought out and put together, but pretty much every other One Piece channel on YouTube caters towards that kind of content. So internet hit me with your weirdness. Sanji is a devil fruit. That's why his eyebrow is swirly. All right, well, I, I guess I did ask for it. So I think I have actually heard this one before, although I don't think it's ever been in a serious context. It's a bit meme -y. But you know, sure, why not? It would be something of a twisted irony, you know? The talented world-class chef who is himself a food. And not only that, but an incredibly poor tasting food as well. Plus, swirls are pretty damn compelling evidence. In fact, with that in mind, I think that we here today can quite comfortably comfortably confirm that every member of the Vinsmoke family is indeed a devil fruit, all of whom taste horrendous, Reiju included. Yeah, come at me, Reiju stands. Also, FYI, in the manga, Vivi's breasts in particular are also devil fruits. Not in the anime version, though, because they removed the swirls. So, yeah, so that's gonna come back to haunt Toei when Oda makes that revelation. But you know what bothers me most about this whole Sanji is a devil fruit theory? It's because nobody tends to take it further and state exactly what kind of devil fruit Mr. Sanji would be. And my personal speculation would be a mythical Zoan model pervert. Kinda late add-on, but there's a theory that the reason Luffy has zero interest in girls is because NL hit Luffy in the balls. All right, I'm going to be very honest with you, Blazer the Dazer. I think you're 100% right. Because if we recall the events of Alabaster, Luffy was, he was keen to see the display put on by Nami in the women's bath, but after that, he never displayed such an inkling again, as demonstrated by yet another bath scene featuring Boa Hancock. So yes, I think we're onto something, not really obviously, but yeah, let's, let's go with that. Dragon is somehow the first to have 2DF Wind Logia and mythical Dragon Zoan, plus he's Uranus. Or Uranus, I suppose, to make it sound less like anus. So basically, Dragon is everything, your anus included. And personally, I think it's just incredibly greedy for the user of not just one Wind Logia, but two Wind Logias, according to this comment, as well as a mythical dragon type on top of that. And I know that's not what this guy is saying, but that's what I prefer to think, and it's probably just as likely. Dragon is a prime candidate for speculation as quite possibly the most mysterious character in the series, and as such, anything and everything will be attributed to him. Not just the obvious, but as we see here, Dragon is also an ancient weapon. Then again, Dragon is also often cited as a former Marine Admiral. And there's also the obscure train of thought that Dragon is himself the One Piece. But of course, my favorite piece of Dragon related speculation is that he is Luffy's mother. That's right, not just the father, but mother as well. Speaking of, does Crocomum count? Crocomum absolutely counts. And I'm sure this is something that each and every one of you has stumbled across. But due to that little conversation between Evenkov and Crocodile in Impel Down, where Evenkov claimed to know Crocoboy's secret, it is not only fanon now that Crocodile was once a woman, but this thought has been taken further to very dangerous places. And now whether you like it or not, Crocodile is indeed Luffy's mother. That really was the danger of releasing Evenkov into this world though, because now literally any character can be Luffy's biological mother with just a bit of hormonal assistance. Dragon is Luffy's mother, Crocodile is Luffy's mother, Southbird is Luffy's mother, Pell, in fact, Luffy is Southbird's mother. The potential is rather unfortunately endless. Blackbeard is three little men in a coat. <laughs> I love this. Of all of the explanations surrounding his ability to consume multiple fruits and frequent ties to the number three, this is certainly my favorite. And how could anybody even come close to being disappointed with a twist like that? I mean, just imagine that beautiful chorus of zehahas echoing all across the Grand Line. That Zoro's natural sense of direction is actually pointed to Laugh Tail. All right, so I think this one forms part of a collective of crack Zoro thoughts, one of which is that he has been to Laugh Tail during the two-year time skip. Here's the thing though. I 
would actually be quite keen for Zoro to be the first straw hat to step foot on Laugh Tale after accidentally discovering it somehow while the rest of the crew are in the general vicinity. Kind of like how he was the first to arrive on Sabadi, although that was largely thanks to Perona. Still, just imagine the comic potential of Zoro being able to say that he, the man with the worst sense of direction in the world, was the person to discover Laugh Tale after all of this time. But that's not the end of this because we still have some more Zoro to come. That Zoro will open his eye and have some kind of Sharingan. Now I need to be careful about how I say this because I've certainly done it myself, but many have the tendency to latch onto hidden features and claim that they will always have a profound purpose. In fact, I for one kind of live by the idea that if a primary character is given a mask, then it is for the sake of having a reveal down the line. And for the most part, I think that's proved pretty accurate with One Piece. But with all of that said, I do want to stop hearing about Zoro's eye. And there's all sorts of thoughts and deviations on the Sharingan idea, like the idea that he has contained the demon of a cursed blade in that eye, and all sorts of things that point to similarities with Silver's Ray Lee. Sometimes though, a design element is just a design element, but I am fully prepared to eat my words one day if he does open that eye to reveal a squishy ball similar to those owned by a certain Mihawk. Blackbeard getting the Gura Gura no Mi by eating Whitebeard's dick. Um. Gein is every mystery character. That's right, ever since the conclusion of Baratier, a certain segment of fans have been rather desperately anticipating the return of Gein, a man who almost certainly died not too long after we last saw him. He is one of the very, and I mean very few characters, who has never appeared in the series again. And even in 2020, as we prepare to take on two of the four emperors in Wano, speculation is still rife with one of the more recent ideas being that Gein was now a member of the Tobi Ropo, or maybe even CP0 or Sword, or actually, anything. If it exists, it is Gein. And given that this train of thought has been running strong since 1999, I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. Strangest theory I came across in One Piece is Bonnie is pregnant with Ace's child and she is hiding it with her devil fruit abilities. Something like that. I don't remember the whole theory, video, or the guy who made. I watched that video really long time ago. And I, yeah, once again, I, I think I brought this on myself by asking for these theories. No comment. That Sanji learned newcomer tempo and that he can use Death Wink with his hidden eye and TBH, I would love to see it. All right, so I'm assuming you mean Kenpo, and this is kind of like a variation on the Zoro Sharingan theory, you know, because one eye is hidden, so it clearly must have a hidden purpose. Just like Sanji's initial hidden eye, which had mountains of speculation regarding it, and then the post time skip came and went, and it was, well, it was nothing. I do find the thought of Sanji using Death Wink quite funny though, a technique that he would only invoke in the most desperate of situations, brushing his hair to the side to reveal eyelash extensions and combat mascara. And in fact, maybe he even has to put on the dress in order to use it to full effect. This could be Sanji's own personal Soga King here, an alter ego disguise, Sanjina perhaps, princess, of the German Kingdom. Meadows is Kaido. So I'm starting to see a trend here. A lot of the theories tend to center around this person is actually this person, as well as this person gave birth to that person and this person boned down with this other person. Still, this whole Meadows is Kaido train of thought was one of the craziest niche ideas that I have ever experienced because I quite vividly remember this one circulating through the fan base, specifically on AP forums. And if you're not familiar with it, basically Meadows was this dude who was in the Corridor Coliseum and he appeared in the Battle Royale but then unlike most other competitors, he wasn't seen again. So people latched onto this and thought that there was some purpose behind keeping this particular character shrouded from the story. But then of course he did appear again randomly and that put a halt to any sort of thinking along those lines. Once again, signaling that sometimes there definitely is no grander plan. Roger's base had a theory that Randolph, the rabbit homie, had Mihawk's soul. I think I very vaguely remember hearing something along those lines. And this is one of those situations where we really should not judge characters purely based on the hats they wear. I mean, there are circumstances like Rayleigh and Mihawk's coat looking startlingly similar, and that is almost certainly conveying a connection there, but that is a bit different seeing a rabbit in cosplay. And while we're here though, let me just say that Randolph was probably one of my favorite characters introduced on Whole Cake Island, and I always thought it was a bit of a shame that we didn't get much more of him. And again, you could probably say that for most characters in that arc, or indeed the entire post time skip section of the series. Roger had the Jacka Jacket fruit, 
but never used it. <laughs> All right, so I actually really like this one. The idea that the Pirate King had one of the most useless devil fruits in existence and became king despite that. However, and this is a big however, in Roger's hands, the Jaka Jaka no Mi is actually pretty damn perfect because this is the very rare circumstance that will grant this fruit some good use. Because imagine a situation where say Roger unzips and then tells Garp to get inside him in a completely platonic way, of course, but thus going on to become one of the most powerful beings that this world has ever seen. I once saw a man say that Kaido is a road poneglyph, but YouTubers sometimes make fake theories for views. Maybe that is why. And look, I need to own up to this one. I mean, I certainly did not create this theory, but I actually did quite enjoy it. And I would have been completely on board with the idea that Kaido was a poneglyph that was given a mythical Zoan or something, which was why he's completely unkillable because the poneglyphs themselves are effectively indestructible. So I may just may have let this idea slip out in a couple of chapter reviews. And you know what? At the time of this recording, Oda still has not provided an explanation for Kaido's godlike toughness. So meh. Akainu is in love with Kuzan. Excellent. So what we're implying here is that Punk Hazard was either a lover's quarrel or 10 consecutive days of Loki users banging. I see. And I mean, it certainly gives new meaning to the term Fleet Admiral position. Aokiji can freeze time. Ah, huh, okay, that's actually a kind of funky abstract take on the fruit. And before Wano, I would have said that that was completely ridiculous because Oda never messes around with time, but look, we have Toki now. So all of that is out the window. So sure, why not? The awakening of the Hiehe no Mi allows one to use the world, sure. Heracles is green bull and I kind of support it. I mean, everyone believes that GB can control plants and Heracles never removed the armor. Then GB has been away for years. I don't understand the last sentence there. But why does quote unquote everyone believe that Green Bull can control plants? Is it just because he has green in his name? He could control any green thing. I mean, he could be an avocado logia for all we know, but that doesn't even properly delve into the discussion at hand here. So we're positing that this man is actually this man. Yeah, okay, why not? Seems legit. Sanji is stronger than Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And this one takes the award for the most outlandish theory of the day. I probably don't even need to go into this one and we're definitely not going to top it. So this does seem like a solid place to end. Although in all seriousness, Sanji fans don't come at me. I honestly do not care who is strong. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.